Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo esports podcast. This is episode 46 for the week of November 13th, 2018. My name is Josh, aka JK Fire, and this week I'm joined by the ill one. And not ill as in cool, I mean ill as in sick because he's genuinely sick. Will, aka I am Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm hanging in there, guys. It's, uh, yeah. I got a horrible cough, not feeling the, the greatest, but I'm here. My voice is probably going to crack and do weird things today, but it is what it is. We're going to get through it. Just get ready for roster media. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Josh, how are you? I am you, great. You're wearing your coat still. I w- <laughs> For those who don't know, I'm a freeze baby. I was born in December. You think I'd be used to this. I lived in Minnesota my entire life. You think I'd be used to this shit. I hate the cold. I'm a tall, lanky dude. All right. I hate the cold. So I wear my coat basically all the time now at work, my full work shift. I work at an office job, by the way. So like I have my coat on all day. I turn the fireplace on as soon as I get home. It turns like what? 76 in there. I'm feeling great. (laughs) <laughs> my car is cranked up maximum heat the whole time if i'm in josh's car or over at his house i'm sweating and he's just there like oh i'm perfectly fine <laughs> it feels great i love it so much oh my god it's okay though i'm sorry i i'm just gonna do what i do uh oh. <laughs> will before we get into the roster mania though a couple pieces of housekeeping to get us started off first and foremost Yesterday, we record the show on Mondays, so yesterday, which was Sunday, November 11th, it was Veterans Day, so just a quick shout out and a thank you to everyone who has served or continues to serve in the military. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate you fighting for our freedoms each and every day, and it should go noticed more often. We should notice it more often, so there you go. And then also, uh, some sad news that happened today that I just want to hit on because it it has to do with nerddom. You know, Stan Lee has passed away at the age of 95 and uh, just uh, want to say rest in peace and thank you for your countless memories that you provided throughout the years. I was uh, talking to um, someone at work who is huge into comics and, you know, the Marvel Universe. And we were talking about like, what are they going to he's been in every single Marvel movie. Like they're going to have to do something like even if it's CGI, like it's going to feel empty without him making that cameo. Yeah. So I wonder if they uh I wonder if they were able to get his cameo appearance in because I I believe they already started filming for the fourth Avengers movie. Yes, yeah. Um I I had heard filming his wrapped on that. Okay, so, so his cameo he, should be in that movie. Yeah, then. but even so moving forward, right, it's gonna, will be sorely missed. There'll be a void for sure. Um and then hopefully to put things on a lighter note, we have information on the community play dates now. So as we talked about last week, what we are going to be doing is starting the Saturday after HCS Atlanta. So after the final Halo 5 tournament, we will be doing scheduled HCS Pro Talk community play dates each and every Saturday. Time, like time slot to be determined. But think of it like just a couple hours every Saturday. So not a huge chunk of time out of your day, but it will give people an opportunity who have not been able to participate a chance to participate, and then people who have participated in the past, obviously, chances to participate again. We want to, this was a great idea presented by the Podcast Evolve folks, and we're just happy to help and contribute. It's going to be a good time. Um, We've been talking about it, but are we going to be streaming our play dates? Yes. So as we talked about last episode, the plan is to, uh, we will stream our play dates on Saturdays, and we'll upload that content to YouTube as well. So if you miss it, you have an opportunity to watch it if you want to. There will be shenanigans. There will be a lot of swearing from me. So uh, I'll beware. Get excited. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Can't wait. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more details. We'll have more to share, obviously, after Atlanta. Because this weekend's going to be fucking massive. And... As Maddie Rums has provided countless pieces of information to us, there's a lot to talk about in our pre-show in regards to things that are happening. But we'll get into that later. Will, what do we normally start the show off with? We always start with some Roster Mania. Roster Mania! 
And I think I shocked Josh by saying the quote first before playing the sound. Yo, it's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I thought I'd change it up for one. <laughs> All right, you're feeling loopy. I'm feeling great. Let's get this shit going. All right. So here are your teams that we have found throughout the week that have either changed names, changed players, changed something along the way. Here we go. <clears throat> Coming out of the LATAM region, we have Team Nemesis, which is including Rami, Tapping Buttons, Sabas, and King Nick. We have Team Sirius, which is Marex. Skyline, Styler, and Undone. Sorry, I... I think I said Mirax because there's a Z on the end. Yeah. Miraxes. Sure. Sure. Um, we have Optic Mexico, which is Jeter's A7NZ, AXANZ, and I Hixler. And we have Desolation, Team Desolation, which includes Art Zur88, Christia Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one you can add to the what the fuck name list. Christy Agaipa. What? We have uh, Louis PWF and V per pond. I think you're putting an extra, like a T in Chrissy Agaipa? Chrissy Agaipa? Yeah. Chrissy Agaipa? T Some... in there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Why not make it harder than it already is? <laughs> Why not? Fuck it. All right. Next, we have Team God Picks, which includes Absolute, Insidious K, Finite X, and Hardeen. Out of the Australia, New Zealand region, we have Team Odd Flex, which includes Young Wilcox, Monza, Piprins, and Sumenk. Next, we have team No More of This Dead Game. <laughs> oh, what a team name there. This includes Inferno, Mike Yippie, Reaver, and Delusionist. I wonder what they think about Halo 5. I think they love it. I think, I think they think it's the greatest Halo of all time. Next, we have team DD Osprey Gaming, which includes Diad Diad Diadact, if I can uh, speak properly here. I'm Bananasaurus, my favorite name so far. We have Boom Chakalaka and Legend of Socks. It's it's. Uh, do, do you want to try saying the team name one more time? Think about it for a second. Deed Osprey. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. I thought I'd give you a second chance on that. Thank one. you. No problem. I'm like, you got this. You fucking got this. Out of the EU region, there's nothing to report. And out of North America, here we go. We have Team Rain, which includes Brainstorm, Burton, Rob the Turtle, and Rhino. And we have Team In Control, which includes Galaxy, Neuronical, Swish, and Vetra. And that's it for your roster mania this week. Nice job, Will. I did it. Yeah. <laughs> the way you said that. The way you said that. I did it. <laughs> That was amazing. Oh, my God. And since that's it for Roster Media, that means it's time for COD and other games. Watch. But again, for the third week, I think, in a row, there's nothing to report at this time. Therefore, that does it for COD and other games. Watch. What I'm thinking is going to happen is after Atlanta, we're going to have more people potentially making the switch. Yeah, we'll have more official notifications and results of yes. what's happening. So that's why we still have the segment. <laughs> Until, like, we for sure don't have anything else happening, we're, we'll keep the segment in until that happens. But I imagine something's going to happen after Atlanta. Just have a hunch, you know? I don't have any insider information. I just have a hunch. All right. Well, it's time for that segment where we're back in this location, and uh, the world wonders, did Will actually play any more Halo over the week. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Will's Adventures within the Halo Wars. Yeah. Uh, I don't think my Xbox has been fired up in like over a month. Oh, fuck. It's, yeah. Kind of sad. <laughs> this is sitting over there. This Halo 5 Xbox One. Yeah. Just chilling over here with an what looks like a, a cable in a bag sitting on top of it, a game case 
underneath that bag with the cable inside of it. His Xbox One Elite controller case sitting on top of the Xbox as well. I mean, the Elite controller's right in front of me. I just need to pick it up and play. But I've been playing, uh, I've been sticking with the Blackout on Call of Duty. Um, I've been playing some squads with some uh, friends of friends and uh, doing pretty well. So it's fun and enjoyable and just keep going with that. That's all you've been playing? That's all I've played. Hell yeah. All right. What about you? I see you have some games listed again. I've got some games listed, Will. I'm playing some more Red Dead Redemption 2, taking it very slow, like a couple missions a day, basically. I'm there, still in chapter two. There's a video out there. Yeah. And the caption is the ultimate betrayal. And it's a, uh, the guy, it's a cell phone video, obviously, but the guy is petting the dog in the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And he pans down to the right, and his beagle is sitting there in the corner, just staring at him. <laughs> I love it. It was so good. Dog is fucking utterly pissed off. Yeah. But yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2, it's great so far. It's a good time. Um, Forza Horizon 4. Again, I just log in to get my wheel spins. It's basically it. No, I, I've, I've done... I'm doing more of the street racing league. So, Yeah. It's good stuff. Uh, the next up, some Black Ops 4. Play more multiplayer. I still have yet to play a Zombies match. Maybe I'll do that soon. Who the fuck knows? I watched some streams on some Zombies match. Some Josh OG? No, I was watching oh. uh, Vis. TSN Vis play. Oh. And uh, they were doing the... Uh, it was like the arena. It was like a Coliseum look yeah. type of deal. Yeah. And there's a point, which I thought was hilarious, to like... So there's bu- there's a bunch of stuff you can do in zombies. I had no idea. It's oh not, yeah, uh, but to get an item, you literally have to throw grenades into the crowd. Like there's a crowd watching you, and you throw grenades and you piss off the crowd, and then they start flinging poo at you, and you have to harvest that poo and bring it to a certain spot on the map to like further, like you have to. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The crowd throws shit at you. Yeah, if and you not have happy. to harvest the shit. You have yeah. It's ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Zombies. There you go. If you ever desired shit being thrown at you to then harvest said shit and then deposit said shit to get an Easter egg. Well, it's not. Games for you. I guess it's uh, uh, maybe an Easter egg, but it helps like you get a better gun, you know, a better weapon, a power up from it, something. You get powered up shit. Powered up shit. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That sounds awesome. Um, besides the shit throwing, I've been playing some more Overwatch, just like the multiplayer, it's good stuff, and then, uh, some World of Warcraft as well, and, uh, guess what, Will, (laughs) I know you're shaking your head at me right now, but guess what, so I have a gnome warrior, all right? Here we go. So, (laughs) so I, I'm not like, I've just made a couple new characters, because when patch 8.1 comes out in December... That's when I'm going to fully get back into it because apparently they're changing how leveling is going to work. Um, They're drastically reducing the cost to level. Like across the board. Up until like level 110. So that's good. Because I'm I'm like playing from level 1 up. Okay. So I have a gnome warrior. His name is the Grundler. Alright. I made a gnome warlock. Named Grundlemort. Like Voldemort. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Will and, I, Will and I are watching the Harry Potter movies again with our significant others. And, uh, yeah. You, you were inspired? I was fucking inspired. Uh, I'm like, my, my ultimate goal is to make one of every class. Or, like, wait. Yeah, one of every class. And, like, they all can't be gnomes, unfortunately, but... What the fuck are you going to do? But yeah, I just thought that was really fucking cool. Grundlemort. It's like Voldemort, but he's a fucking no warlock. He's great. <laughs> Will's like, fuck off, man. Um, That's it for me, though. That's all I'm going to play. Should we get us some news, Will? Yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the news. Let's do it up. First and foremost, congratulations to Geodime by Riley for winning the Forge Hub community favorite map for September. Link... Will be included along with everything else we talk about in the show notes within the Google Doc link. So check it out. Next up, 
New fan-made Halo PC games are in development. First up, uh, Coral's campaign will be played as the Spartan 3 fire team on an outer colony planet named Coral. And in Downfall, players will take control of an elite squad of ODSTs to battle Covenant. So go ahead and check out the tweet from El Dorito in the show notes. Next up, Halo 4's birthday. The game everybody loves to hate, except me. Because I actually do like that game, so fuck all you haters. Halo 4's birthday was November 6th. So happy birthday, Halo 4. And then the game that everybody loves to love, for some godforsaken reason, Halo 2's birthday was on November 9th. So happy birthday, Halo 2. I'm just kidding. I love Halo 2 as well. Love all Um, Halos. Except Reach. There's a YouTube video out there that Uh uh, Dr. Disrespect was praising the Halo 2 ranking system. Everybody praises the Halo 2 ranking system. And he's wondering, he's like, why the fuck hasn't that not been adopted more in modern video games? Because everybody loved it. He thought it was great. He even said it was great. So, um... Yeah, it kind of made me wonder, why hasn't it been more prominent in video games since it worked so well? Fuck if I know, man. Exactly. exactly. Just just a little question that popped in my head. Maybe a future topic will be, why haven't other games picked up the Halo 2 ranking system? Maybe. Should Halo go back? Oh, no. <laughs> um, next up, the Master Chief Totaku figure is available now at GameStop. And I quote from Twitter, Totako's Master Chief figure has landed, equipped with his trusty MI5, MA5D assault rifle. Spartan 117 is poised and ready for battle. Add this figure to your Halo collection today. Available exclusively at GameStop. Josh, will you be adding it to your collection? Was that even a fucking question you had to ask? Of course I am. <laughs> of course, I'm such a fucking loser. Of course I'm going to fucking buy that thing. Next up, we have MCC playlist updates uh, from November 7th, 2018 by Postums over on HaloWaypoint.com. And I'm going to read it to you, Will. Strap in. You get to rest your voice for a little bit. Enjoy this. Good morning, MCC players. Today, well, not today, but today in terms of the article, November 7th, we are conducting a playlist update that will be increasing the weighting of Team Slayer in Team Team Arena ranked playlists. As a reminder, we are continuing work on an update that we are targeting in the following few weeks with feature updates for several areas of the game. Please read below for the details on the changes happening today. As always, a huge thank you to everyone for the continuous feedback on matchmaking and what changes you would like to see. Team Arena Playlists. We have increased the weighting of Team Slayer game types in the Team Arena Playlists so that they appear more frequently when playing in these playlists. This feedback is based collectively on players still wanting to experience less objective game types in the Team Arena Playlists. Objectives will still be played, just at a lesser frequency. This weighting change applies to the following playlists. Halo 4 Team Arena, Halo 3 Team Arena, Halo 2 Anniversary Team Arena, Halo 2 Classic Team Arena, and Halo CE Team Arena. Next up, we have the Halo Community Update posted on November 8th, 2018 by Grim Brother one Again, this comes from a Halo Waypoint article. Will, you still get to strap in for a little bit? Rest that voice. And I quote, Core play is back within Halo 5. So if you wanted the core experience of Halo 5... The playlist is back. You can go ahead and play it. Infection maps have also been updated for the new ones that have been released in the playlist, so go ahead and check those out. And then we have some MCC updates. And I quote, Earlier this week, I caught up with the ever-elusive Tyler Postums Davis, the community team's own Special Forces Commando, and grabbed details on some upcoming MCC goodness. October has somehow already come and gone, and the talented Titans over on the 343 publishing team is still hard at work on future features, bug fixes, and our next substantial update to Halo, the Master Chief Collection. This particular update you'll note in a previous blog was slated for the end of October, but as we got closer to our initial release date, the team was wanting to iron out a few specific pieces so that they arrived on your hard drives without those annoying wrinkles. Also, with the Halo 2v2 showdown at the HCS Finals 2018 coming up, the team made the decision to push changes out just a little bit further to not impact the players or the event. This next update will include changes to social matchmaking, ranked matchmaking, additional controller customization options, player choices to show legacy colors of enemies in Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2 Classic Multiplayer, the addition of being able to display a timer in Halo Combat Evolved, and multiple bug fixes. Full details of what is coming in this patch will be discussed in the coming weeks. 
One key change that the team wanted to get in front of you, fine folks, for feedback, is the planned playlist changes for ranked competitive playlists. Ranked play will consist of the following playlists once the update goes live. Halo CE Team Doubles. Halo 2 Classic Team Arena. Halo 2 Anniversary Team Arena. Halo 3 Team Arena. Halo 3 Hardcore Team Doubles. And Halo 3 Lone Wolves 6 Players. We'll be sharing more details about all features and changes planned in this next update in the coming weeks, including a full blog post that details the upcoming changes, so stay tuned. MCC Insider Flight for November 10th and 11th. One more note on the MCC front. This weekend we'll be uh, flighting the upcoming update and giving everyone an opportunity to acquire the MCC Insider nameplate if you volunteer time for each session on Saturday and Sunday. This will give the community one final chance to, to offer feedback, and we'd love to hear what you have to say about the new features being tested. When should we play? November 10th. The first session is from 11 a.m. PDT to 2 p.m. PDT. Second session is 6 p.m. PDT to 9 p.m. PDT. November 11th, the times are the same. 11 a.m. PDT to 2 p.m. PDT, and then 6 p.m. PDT to 9 p.m. PDT. The goals of the flight. This MCC Insider build will reflect the next update, but will offer multiplayer-only content as this update focuses heavily on that area of the game. The content of this Insider build will make its way to the full version of MCC in the coming weeks after the HCS Finals 2018 at DreamHack Atlanta. The build's main area of focus for feedback are the final match composer options, the all-new controller customization settings, the additional options to toggle name colors for Halo CE and HC2, toggles for timers in HCE multiplayer, and the inclusions of US West dedicated servers for starters. And finally, the Halo Wars 2 update. A huge congratulations to Almirante99 for taking it all, and a round of applause to Rock Generation and Scootman2 for some fantastic matches to watch. As we've mentioned before, the top three players from the tournament will receive Halo Wars themed loot boxes provided by 343 in the coming weeks. In addition, one of the prizes for winning the Invitational includes the opportunity for the winner to offer up a proposed balance change that we will look at integrating into a future patch. Almirante 99's suggestion has been so far well accepted, and in a future update we'll be revisiting Arbiter, Ripa, Marami, and looking at ways to improve this leader. Specifically, the team is looking to begin by focusing on the early tiers of this hero unit and his passive leader power, Conduit of Rage. That's your normal news. A lot of stuff. Next up, Will, we got some competitive news! It's about time. It's been a little while since we've had this. I'm excited to get into it. First and foremost, congratulations to Ogre2, who is now the manager of Reciprocity's Gears and Call of Duty teams. And I quote, In addition to being the head coach of the Halo team, Ogre2 will be taking on the role of team manager for our Call of Duty and Gears of War teams. Congratulations to the GOAT, as we look forward to Tom sharing his wisdom with other Rec Pack squads. Congratulations, Tim. And then, Will, the last piece of competitive news we have is a potential sneak peek into the future of Halo Esports until Infinite. And also a thank you to Maddie Rums for providing this news story. And actually, I'm going to include another piece of information from Maddie Rums that he included in the Discord. We're going to read the whole thing right fucking now. So first, this was a tweet from Tashi. Um, so K Mattify asked Tashi, so what's the deal with the rest of the Halo 3 passes for Atlanta? If I buy a spec pass, a spectator pass, so I'm guaranteed access to the venue, but get an H3 pass at the door, will I get a refund on my spectator one? Who can help me out with this? Tashi replies with, the remaining 32 spots will be filled by on-site registration on Saturday morning. No extra purchases needed if you're in the building. K Mattify replies with, so we just need to show up early Saturday morning to try and get a spot? Tashi replies with, yes. We know demand is high, and we have maximized space and scheduling to accommodate as many people as possible. We unfortunately won't be able to accommodate everyone. Ghost Ayami replies with, In the future, I think it'd be better to see more than 50% of the passes purchasable online. Planning for an event in order to compete takes a lot of commitment. Flight, hotel, teammates, time off, practice, etc. Can't imagine doing all that just to get turned away at the door. Frowny face. Tashi replied with, Agreed. And that's why we changed it to 50% to allow those people to secure a spot before traveling, like yourself. We also want to allow people who play in the Halo 5 to have an opportunity to play in it as well, like we have done with all side events in the past. Gosiami replies, Oh, okay. I wouldn't consider this tournament just another side event, though. Halo 3 has a long history of events. Reserving 50% of passes for players that were committed to another game feels off, especially since they're potentially getting into another tournament for free. 
Tashi finally responds with, We're definitely not, and that's why it's got a $10,000 prize instead of a normal $5,000 FFA. And we'll get more broadcast time than FFAs normally. Unfortunately, the demand is greater than we can supply for this event. But ultimately, our main priority is the $300,000 Halo 5 Finals. Certainly see the potential disconnect between Halo 5 players going to compete in Halo 3, but we've been committed to providing extra value to those who pay for full team passes. The opportunity is there, but they still need to register, so not necessarily reserved just for them. But understand that it's a tough situation for those that just want to play in the, in the, Halo, in the Halo 3 and didn't get a pass because it's not guaranteed. Totally get that. There will be more opportunities to compete in the future for sure. So that's the main sentence right there. Yes. More opportunities compete in the future for sure. And then, go ahead, Will. Oh, no. So it just makes, it just sounds like there's going to be more Halo 3 events or past Halo game events. Correct. And again, this comes from our Discord. Thank you again to Maddie Rumps for providing, for providing this information. I'm sorry, it's having a difficulty speaking here. So Maddie Rum states, in other news, this was from Tashi in a response to someone on Team Beyond who said they were worried about Halo Esports after Atlanta. And this is a quote from Tashi. Halo Esports will not be completely neglected until Halo Infinite. Far from that, in fact. The MCC team need to optimize for best player experience and have supported HCS activities all along the way. The Esports crowd is important for MCC, but is overall one piece of the pie. We'll talk a bit more about what's coming at DreamHack and then continue to release more and more info as we go. Like mentioned in the blog we published a couple weeks ago, we are shifting the way we're thinking about things right now on the esports side in hopes of setting the groundwork for Halo Infinite. So there you go. That, that I mean, so we've speculated so much already in regards to what the future is going to be. But it's nice to know that it is true. They're going to have more to talk about at Atlanta. They said it in the article, like Tashi said a couple weeks ago. But now we also have confirmation right here from Tashi himself stating that we'll have more to talk about. So hopefully that does mean that it's not the end yet. That it's not completely going away. Right, exactly. That we'll have more official tournaments to talk about. Hopefully, before Infinite comes out. But Will, that does it for all of the news and I think it's time that we get into some scrims. And oh boy, were there some scrims to talk about this week. Oh yeah. There Take were. it away. So here we go. On Monday, November 5th, we had Commonly's team go up against Accelerate. Series score was 9-3, to three, going to Accelerate. We also had Nemesis go up against Rain. Series score 8-6, to six, going to Nemesis. Next up on Tuesday, November 6th, we had Tox going up against Reciprocity. Series score 7-3. to three. Reciprocity this time around. Next up, we had Lux Gaming going up against Elevate. Series score 6-3, to three, going to Elevate. And finally, Mentality going up against Trifecta. 10-1 to one Mentality. Mm. So Reciprocity kind of uh, running away with that Tox series. They are. And the Mentality showing up. Yeah, 10-1. to one. Wow. It's a big one. All right. On Wednesday, November 7th, we had Reciprocity go up against Accelerate. Series score was 8-3 to three Reciprocity. We then had Commonly's team go up against Accelerate. Series score there was 9-5 to five Accelerate. And then we also had Reciprocity take on Elevate. Series score was 10-5 to five going to Reciprocity. Reciprocity still remaining ahead a lot here. See if that ever changes. Thursday, November 8th, Renegades went up against Tox. Who boy, series score 7 to nothing going to Tox. I don't know what happened there, but... Because Renegades were kind of playing at that higher tier for some time. They're a dominant squad. They really are. And this next scrim might go to show that a little bit. Uh, Renegades going up against Trifecta, 12 to 3 Renegades. So, there's that one. And then Nemesis going up against Rain, nine to one Nemesis. Nemesis continuing to do some work. All right, on Friday, November 9th, Elevate went up against Accelerate. Series score was twelve to three, going to Accelerate. We then had Tox go up against Reciprocity. 
series score here, 11 to four talks. There we see the turnaround. Um, oh my God, Will. What? Holy shit, did I? Wait. Josh is uh, second guessing himself right now. What are you thinking? We missed a day. We missed a day. We missed a day, Will. What day do we miss? I, oh shit, read Wednesday. Oh my God. Wait, no. No, oh my God. Oh, whoa, whoa, Will. I, whoa, whoa, Will. <laughs> I don't know what's happening right my now. My mind is fucking fried, dude. What the fuck? Oh my God. Whoa, Will, continue. You're fine. Forget audience. Let's let's rewind a sec. Let's bring it all back. I think we're good. I think we're good too. I th- Yeah? I think I'm I'm You're good. Okay. Go ahead, Will. Take it away. So here we go. Back to Friday, November 9th. Talks went up against reciprocity. Series score was 11 to 4 going to talks. Stat line for this series. Reciprocity had 30 more kills, 16 more assists, and 29 less deaths. Tox had 12 more power kills, but reciprocity had 59 more precision kills and 58 more magnum kills. We had Lux Gaming go up against Mentality. Series score 5 to 3 go into Mentality. We had Nemesis take on Trifecta. Series score 10 to 5 going to Nemesis. Then we had Tox take on Elevate. Series score there 10 to 5 going to Tox. Then we had Renegades go up against Accelerate. Series score 8 to 7 Renegades. On to Saturday, Josh. Thank you, Will. For Saturday, November 10th, we had Commonly's team go up against Straight Rippin'. Series score 9 to 4, Straight Rippin'. Will, take it away for Sunday. <laughs> All right. On Sunday, we had Nemesis go up against In Control. Series score here was 8-2 to two going to Nemesis. We had In Control go up against Mocket. Series score 9-4 to four, Mocket. Then we had Shock the World go up against Straight Rippin'. Series score 10-4, to four, Straight Rippin'. All right. And hopefully I can't screw this one up. And finally, for Monday, November 12th, we had Reciprocity go up against Commonly's team 13-2. to two. Reciprocity. Renegades went up against Lux Gaming, 9 to 1 Renegades. Mocket went up against Rain, 10 to 4 Rain. And finally, Straight Rippin went up against Nemesis, 8 to 7 Nemesis. Nemesis are looking pretty good, man. They look like they could uh, be in that uh, potential top six spot if they uh, keep pushing. We'll have to see what happens at Atlanta. All right, Will. And listeners, I'm very fucking sorry for not knowing what the hell was going on there with the screw recap. I think Josh lost track of his days. I really did. And what's funny, because like I'm following along, and you started talking about Friday, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait a second, wait. There are four days before Friday. Did we talk about all four days? Let me go back. Wait, Will, wait. Josh, Wait. Did I, did we actually say all four days? And it just kept going back in my mind over and over again. I couldn't fucking come to conclusions that we did. Oof, duh. All right, we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to HCS Pro Talk. We're back with some tournament recaps. Let's do it. First and foremost, Beyond Astro Spartans November Halo 5 Free For All took place. First place went to Booba Dooboo, taking on 500 Smackaroos. Bracket will be included in the show notes. Check it out. Then, we had a little shakeup happen in the UGC Halo 3 2v2 showdown. Qualifier number five. The final qualifier. First place went to Fear and Tusk, consisting of Fear and Tusk. Taking on $500 and 150 points. Second place went to Online Warriors, consisting of Zerka and Carnium. $250 and 100 points. 
Here are the teams we knew. Third and fourth, self-proclaimed consisting of Evader and Guntype, and GMS2S consisting of Gabriel and Fantasy, both taking home $125 and 70 points respectively. And then in fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, we had Alpine Gaming consisting of Winter and AA Ace, Double Time consisting of Subdue and Downfall, Last Supper consisting of Saintly and Little Country, and Immortality consisting of Ravage and Baptism, all taking home 40 points. A bracket will be included. A couple pieces of notable information for you. Some big names competed within this tournament, but it appears that they did not even make it to the top eight. Looks like the competition in Atlanta will be something fierce, Will. So, Roy, Flame Sword, Best Man, Neighbor, and other big names competed in this qualifier. None of them made top eight. See, you have... I've, I've read this in a few places where you've had these pros who maybe haven't picked up Halo 3 in some time, but you've had... The, um, you know, players like Fear Tusk, you know, all these guys, they've continued with Halo 3 and stuck with it. And they're, they're fresh. They're coming in and they, they know what they need to do to win. They're funky fresh. Yeah. And let the record show that if Clutch was there, <laughs> he, he'd mop the floor with every one of them. Listen to the interview if you don't remember that one. And then finally, uh, the normal top two of self-proclaimed in GMS2S have actually been knocked down to the 3-4 spot, that uh, that qualifier. So, like I said, I think the I think the competition is going to be fierce at this 2K. I mean, not this 2K, at this tournament. It'll be uh, exciting to watch. It's going to be great. Can't wait. Will, would you please tell us about some 2Ks? All right. So out of the Latam region for two Ks, first place went to Nemesis this week. They took home three hundred fifty bucks. Um, all first place teams taking home two thousand pro points. Uh, in second place, Shock the World took home one hundred fifty bucks. They took home twelve hundred pro points. In third, fourth, we had Sirius and Optic Mexico taking home eight hundred pro points. And in fifth, sixth, we have Destillation and God Picks taking home the six hundred pro points. Out of Australia, New Zealand. First place went to Paradox. Down under with Alex was subbing for Barcode. Yes. And they took home the $500 and 2,000 pro points. Second place was Odd Flex. That meme's been popping up everywhere. They took home $250 and 1,200 pro points. Did you say meme? Yeah. Like the, the weird flex, but okay. Oh, Oh my god. Okay, I've been seeing tweets about that and I don't even know. Okay, or odd cool. flex, but okay, type thing. Got it. Um, All right. I can dig it. In third, fourth, we had no more of this dead game and Deed Osprey Gaming. Nope, just regular Osprey Gaming there. Well, they they changed their. Oh, whatever. Osprey Gaming taking home 800 pro points. Oh, I, I see what happened. Yeah, you see you see the, now, Will. Fifth, fifth play was Deed Osprey Gaming. <laughs> I, I just thought there was a typo. Believe it or not, bad. Will, they're not the same team. I thought they were for a they're second. They're definitely not. Um, For those looking for the EU Games Battle 2K tournament recap for this week, one did not take place, so you're shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we were waiting for it, too. Um, out of North America, first place, taking home the 1500 bucks and the 2000 pro points. Team Reciprocity. So the original plan for this episode was we were going to record on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. And so I was going to be wearing my reciprocity jersey during the recording. But that didn't happen. But they won. So it's all good. Well, that's why I was going to wear it. Oh. Is because they won. Because this happens on Saturday. The tournaments happen on Saturday. Right, right, right. Yeah. You feel me? I I got you. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Second place went to Tox, <laughs> taking home 500 bucks and 1,200 pro points. In third, fourth, we had Renegades and Splice taking home 800 pro points. And in fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, we have Accelerate, uh, Elevate, Your, which is Mentality with Valkyrie and Manny, subbing for Jazeera and Envor, and Lux Gaming, all taking home 600 pro points. 
Yer. Yer. <laughs> That's a fucking name right there. That's some good yeah. stuff. But yeah, Splice played in this 2K. Full roster. It took fourth or third fourth? Yep, took third fourth. <coughs> they clearly show they still have what it takes to compete at the top. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll talk about it in a little bit. We will. And then also, um, if I'm not mistaken, one of the series was Reciprocity going up against Elevate. Apparently it came down to a... I believe, if I'm right on this, it came down to a game five. And it, I think it was a 49-49 Team Slayer. So the game ended 50-49 with Reciprocity winning. I think that's what that was. <laughs> Uh-oh. Will's dying, guys. I'm okay. He ain't feeling good. We did say it at the beginning of the episode, so like they can't complain about it, right? I'm trying my best to hold it together. You know what? You're you're doing great. I need right? a, I need a mute button over here. So I can mute and cough. Don't sell yourself short. You're doing you're doing swell, Will. <laughs> oh, thanks. No problem. All right. Is that it for some tournaments? That's all we got. Will, the time has come. It is now the season of the final Halo 5 tournament. We've made it. This is it. If you're new here, we always do pre-shows before every tournament. We release one show every week, right? So therefore, this is going to be our pre-show for HCS Atlanta 2018. We couldn't be more than excited for this event. It's Halo 5's last official one. It's going to go out with a bang. We got the Halo 3 2v2 showdown tournament as well. And, uh... We're going to talk about some stuff, all right? So strap in, get your popcorn, get your your Doritos, get your Mountain Dew, get whatever drink or food you want, and let's talk about this tournament, shall we? This comes from a Halo Waypoint article, and I quote, Live from Atlanta, the Halo Championship Series makes its way back to the East Coast for the 2018 Season Finals. Teams from around the world have fought all season long in New Orleans and London, and now their story culminates in one tournament to determine who is the HCS 2018 champion. For this year's season finals, we've joined forces with DreamHack, and will be a part of their massive gaming festival, with tens of thousands of fans attending all weekend long. The weekend starts hot, as Friday will feature not only open bracket play for aspiring players, but also group play for invited pro teams from around the world. On Saturday, group play concludes and championship bracket kicks off, where only the best teams will move on. Finally, it'll all come down to Championship Sunday, where we'll crown our 2018 HCS champions. Don't miss the best Halo players on the planet duke it out for over $300,000 in prizing, and their place in HCS history. Here is how the prizing will work. For the Halo 5 tournament, the winning team will take home $120,000. Second place will take home 60,000. Third place, 40,000. Fourth place, 28,000. Fifth and sixth place taking home 13,000. Seventh and eighth taking home 7,000. And finally, ninth through twelfth taking home $3,000. And then the, for the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. First place will take home $6,000. Second place will take home $3,000. And third place will take home $1,000. Will, there's a question, will this be an open tournament? It will. Will. Yes, it will. Yes, <laughs> yes, it will, Will. It will. It is open to all players from around the world. Will, is there going to be an FFA at this tournament? No. You're right, Will. No, there will, not Will. <laughs> You're having way too much fun with that. I am. Next up for the 2v2 showdown. We got some information for you as well. And I quote, the 2v2 showdown will be played on Xbox One X consoles and utilize the latest version of Halo 3 within the Halo the Master Chief collection. Our goal was to allow as many teams as possible to compete while not compromising on format, schedule, or player experience. It's important to keep in mind 
while we're all excited for this tournament, the HCS 2018 Finals Tournament takes priority in terms of scheduling for the whole weekend. We are, however, supporting the 2v2 SHOWDOWN! More so than previous side tournaments. With all that taken into account, the tournament will be limited to 64 teams. Here's a more detailed breakdown. The 2v2 SHOWDOWN! will feature a double elimination bracket. All matches will be best of three, except for the grand finals, which will be best of five. The tournament will start Saturday after the Halo 5 Open 4v4 is concluded, and will run simultaneously alongside the championship bracket for the 4v4. Yes, this does mean that pros competing in the HCS 2018 finals will not be able to compete in the 2v2 showdown due to scheduling conflicts. A full schedule will be released as we get closer to the event, Matches will be broadcast on Saturday night and Sunday to showcase more top Halo 3 gameplay. Now for the broadcast schedule. Thank you to Moses and Maddie Rums for this information. We greatly appreciate it. So first and foremost, for the HCS Finals, the Halo 5 tournament. Friday, November 16th. All times are in Eastern Standard Time, by the way. Just giving you a heads up. If you want a full breakdown on what the times actually are for your time region, then go ahead and check out Moses' tweet. It'll be included in the show notes. Check it out. Friday, November 16th, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday, November 17th, 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. And Sunday, November 18th, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. How about for that Halo 3 2v2 showdown? Saturday, November 17th, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. That's right. It takes place after the Halo 5 tournament. And Sunday, November 18th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., which means, again, it takes place before the Halo 5 tournament. Therefore, Will, it looks to me as though everything might be broadcasted. That would be phenomenal if we were able to see both tournaments fully... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Commentated? Commentated. Broadcasted? Broadcasted. Uh, sure. Analyzed? Sure. All the stuff? All the stuffs. All of the stuffs. Will, would you mind telling me what the talent lineup is for HCS Atlanta 2018? So who you'll see there. Yes. Um, Lottie's going to be, I believe, on the desk again, casting. We have Clutch, Elamite, Onset, Bravo, Walshy, Sims, Strongside, Gaskin, and Wonderboy. So everyone. It's going to be stacked. Everyone's going to be there. Hashtag bring back T2. Yeah. Hashtag free T2. <laughs> he ain't being, he's not going to be there. He might be there to watch, but like, come on guys. Hashtag free T2. He needs us fragging like a pro. He needs to help us fragging like a pro. But yeah, it's a stacked lineup for sure. And then Will. Breaking news, Will. Oh boy. Maddie Rums coming in clutch like usual right now. We have a little bit of information as to who's going to be cast in the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. You really enjoy saying that every time, don't you? I do. You have no idea how many times we're going to be saying it so much oh more next, this weekend. Oh my God. Maddie Rums in the Discord. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. States Sims will be casting Halo 3. With none other than Walshy. This is from Sims, and I quote, You have no idea how excited I am to cast Halo 3 with Dave. This is like a little boy's dream. We are going to cast the shit out of it and have so much fucking fun. Fuck yeah, you are, Sims. <coughs> I am stoked right now. Should be good. Should be great. Will... That's all I got for breaking news, hopefully, at this current point in time. Should we get into some of uh, a soundbite that you haven't been able to use for quite some time now? Roster recap. Yeah, we haven't uh, used this one in a while. It's a roster recap. So we're actually going to go over the teams you uh, might see there at uh, HCS Atlanta. These are the groups, like the confirmed teams in... For groups. In, in the groups, yeah. Do you want to take it away, Will? Here we go. Do it up. So, if you don't know Tox already, this consists of Snakebite, Royal 2, Lethal, and Frosty. 
We have Splice, which is Eco, Stellar, Renegade, and Shotzi. We have Reciprocity. Snipe Down, Pistola, Saiyan, and Trippy. We have Renegades, which includes APG, Mikwin, Penguin, and Neptune. We have Accelerate, which is Boobadoobo, Arctic, Demon D, and Falcated. We have Elevate, which is Ace, L-Town, Spartan, and Sabinator. We have Trifecta, which is Shooter, Rain, Destroyed, and Ryan Noob. But is this actually confirmed? Here we go. Nemesis tweets. Might try to go to Atlanta. Any teams need a fourth? Destroyed uh, re replied, we need two now. Rami replied with one, minus one. No, with one. He with just replied one? with one. And I think he was joking. Okay. Um, because, yeah, uh, roster deadline for these teams was October 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we don't know what's happening there. Um, look for the news to break going forward towards Atlanta because we're still kind of wondering what's happening ourselves. Haven't had anything confirmed yet. Yeah, that's a weird fucking tweet. I haven't seen anything on Trifecta's Twitter. I haven't seen anything on any of the players' Twitters. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It was just Destroyed commenting. Now, Nemesis and Destroyed have teamed together in the past. They were on a straight ripping roster a little bit of time ago. Yep. So, like, we know they team well. It's just... When Destroyed says we need two now, who the fuck is Destroyed talking about? Therefore, who the fuck is off of Trifecta at this point, if anyone is off of Trifecta? Or was it just a joke? I have no idea. And I want to know. I yeah. hope it's a joke, because like you just said, it, these rosters are supposed to be locked. Continue on, Will. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we have Team Mentality, which is Super CC, Talek, Envor, and Jazeera. Talek, thank you for accepting our apology on Twitter. You know what? Okay. Before before you continue on with the raw, I got to fucking say this. So, yes, like Will just said, thank you for accepting our apology. What I thought was fucking hilarious is, man, what the fuck? When the fuck was this? Uh, Man, shit. What was it? A couple days before we recorded? That episode, Talik followed us on Twitter. And I'm like, oh, that's fucking hilarious that, like, Talik follows us on Twitter and I'm going to apologize at this most recent show for fucking, like, straight up shitting on him before. Then I think the day after, Super CC followed us on Twitter. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? And then we released the episode and I get a DM from Talik saying, apology accepted crying happy at like emoji face and i'm like motherfucker <laughs> i couldn't I, it, was, it was just funny so yeah thank you for accepting our apology i'm sorry i shit on you earlier he didn't deserve that and they uh they've shown that they can play with the big boys so i'm hoping and expecting big things from these guys in atlanta exactly to shake up the competition a bit because that's what we always we we talk about every week that we want more competition and that's just what we want to see so they are big boys themselves they are and not only that, but they are confirmed for group stage, which means they don't have to fight through that open bracket. They don't have to fight off against uh, right. Lux Gaming, who is in open. Like, they didn't make it to groups. So, mentality clearly show what it takes to be there. We just need to see them continue that drive further on within the tournament. So, yeah, go ahead. Continue, Well, I'm sorry. Got off track. Yeah. No, no, no worries. Um... Straight ripping. That's where we were. Here we go. Straight ripping. We have respectful Moe's Kimbo and Snipe Drone. Um, we have Team LTN, which is Riots, SLG, Lana, and Chris Lunny and Cristola. Um, but we have another kind of questionable roster here because Batchford tweeted, "I know this is rather last minute, but Riots, Lunny, Morgan, and I have a guaranteed pool play spot for HCS Atlanta. We are interested to see if any organization would want to be represented by us." But again. Roster lock was October twenty second. So does this mean does this mean that SLG and Crystal are out for Batchford and Morga or what's going on there? It's confusing, very confusing. I have no fucking idea. So keep an eye out for that one. We'll have to see what happens rolling into Atlanta. 
But moving on with some roster recap, we have Shock the World, which includes Atzo, Jeff Noble, and Munoz. Magico has uh, been out of, outed of the team, I guess you could say. Um, we've seen this before when teams came over to play. Mm-hmm. With, there was travel, but like someone couldn't travel because of their age. or so, I don't remember what it was. Could be Visa as well. You never Visa, know. Visa, yeah. Yeah. A lot of speculation. But this was, this was included in the tweet when they confirmed the rosters that we're talking about right now. Okay. So... When when the official tweet from the HCS Twitter account came out stating that, I think it stated, with Munoz coming in for Magico, here are the confirmed rosters for HCS Atlanta. Gotcha. So, and this then, one was expected. This one we knew was gonna we knew was happening. All right, and we have team down under, which includes Berserk, Barcode, Slays, and Madzy. And that's what we got for roster recap. All right, Will. So we talked about those funky things happening a little bit earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So Maddie Rums, shout out for like the fifth time to you, my man. He's just all up in there. He is. He's doing God's work right now. So he reached out to Tashi, as a matter of fact, just earlier today. And I quote, Maddie Rums asked Tashi, was there a roster lock or not for HCS Atlanta? Keep seeing a ton of team changes. Tashi replied with, For pros or open teams. For pros, there was, yes, but unfortunately, emergency situations have come up more than usual with regards to Visa and straight up bailing. He kind of just straight up called them out right there. He did. So people are just bailing from the event? Well, what I find funny is that, like, so we know it's the last Halo 5 event, but there's still fucking money and pride on the line. Wouldn't you want to fucking be there and compete? Wouldn't you want to be a part of it just to be a part of it? Yeah, and, and oh. I'm pretty sure. Oh fuck, I need to look to make sure, but I thought that the top teams in each region were invited over, so like their stuff was covered, like their hotel accommodations and yeah. everything. I thought it was. I could be like completely wrong in that regard, but I I thought that's what it said in the official article. <laughs> So you know what? Let's just say it was. Let's say the travel accommodations were covered and you did bail on the event. Why the fuck? Why? You're not losing anything by going. I mean, unless you, if you have a full-time job, I get it. I completely understand. If you have prior commitments, I understand. Life gets in the way. But if you just bailed the bail and you have a chance to, like Will said, like be a part of this. Waste of my time. Just a waste of my time. Tell you that much. Josh calling him out there too. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, should we get into some predictions that are always wrong? Uh, we're going to talk about the community's predictions first, and then we'll get into our predictions that are always incorrect, okay? Okay. All right. So, first and foremost, high tech redneck states. I think this is a pretty hard one to predict with several players splitting their time between Halo and COD. Not sure how that'll affect things. Kind of along the same lines, I think my players to watch will be those that are competing in both Halo and COD. Is that going to affect their performance if they're putting more time and effort into learning Black Ops 4? Or are they just talented enough that all they need is a day or two of practice and they'll be right back in form? I think it'll be interesting to see if some of these uh, other teams that don't plan to move to another game and are still grinding Halo will have an advantage. I'm just hoping for a lot of good close matchups. It'd be nice to see Tox take it, since aside from a few tournaments... They've been the most dominant team in Halo 5. But I also wouldn't be against another team that might, uh, that maybe has been right there at the top, but hasn't gotten a win yet to swoop in and win. Paul, she states, Mentality for sure after this 2K. I hope Tox wins it in an upset, I don't know who, but puts Splice in third. I like that answer, Paul, she. And Gavin states, I really hope one of the OG Halo 3 teams wins it in regards to the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. But I know there's people that literally haven't stopped playing that game since it came out, so we will see. So we got from the community, Will. What do you got for some predictions yourself, Will? All right, so um, let's let's talk about the, the point that was made by High Tech Redneck here. Do you think that We've seen some of these players jump over to Call of Duty. Do you think it'll it will affect play at HCS Atlanta? No. You don't think so? 
No. Do you think that – so with the entire Splice team learning Black Ops, you, do you think – don't think it will affect their placing? No. Okay. You want to know why? Why do you say that? Okay. I don't know. All right? I, I say this all the time. I don't know. But they played in that recent 2K. They got third, fourth. Splice, we're talking about here. Yep. What if they didn't give it their all? Sure. It's not a full-on tournament. Yeah, what if they're like, eh, we'll play in this last one, why not? It's leading up to Atlanta, why not? Fuck it. I bet what High Tech Redneck states um, in regards to whether or not, like, will they only need a day or two of practice to get back in true form? For Splice, yes. For other teams, no. But for Splice, yes. I'll say that. I will say that if I've been grinding a game for a really long time, I try to hop into something else. It can have some effect on me. Again, though, I haven't put in the same amount of hours as these people have for Halo 5 or really any game. I mean, they're 152s and they've been grinding this game forever. Um, On multiple accounts. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure that like, like you said, it's going to be, you know, a day or two of practice and they'll, they'll be right back in the swing of things. Um, But that's, that's all if they, they do put that practice in, Um, you know, you it could be something silly as you're you're retraining your muscle memory if you want to compete in a new game that you might not purposely do it, but because you're trying to retrain your mind, you try to do something in Halo that you would have tried to do in COD. Mm-hmm. And it, it just may, maybe that happens at a pivotal point in the game and you die and it swings momentum. I mean, it it can happen. Will it happen? I don't think so because I feel like these players are mentally strong enough to push past that. But um, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens at Atlanta. I like that we've seen scrims getting closer and flip-flopping back and forth. It means, uh, you know, I think the competition's getting closer and closer for this last event. And I really want to see some shakeups moving into the finals. Um but what I want and what I think is going to happen might not be the case. But that's that's what I'm kind of hoping for Atlanta. Should we give our top eight? Oh boy. This is our one time, this is our one opportunity to do it. You only get one shot. Oh no. Yeah. To not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. I'm stopping there. No. Oh. Um, okay, top eight. Who do you have in your top eight? Oh, we're gonna go me first. Oh, okay. Let, I'll go first then, because <laughs> you don't want to. I'm just. I don't care. I don't care who goes. All right. Well, first is first. I have Splice. I think they're gonna dominate and win. Fuck, man. All right. Second, I have Tox. Third, I have Renegades. Fourth, I have Reciprocity. Okay. Uh, fifth. Uh, this is where things can... Once you get past four, things can just flip-flop depending on how pools shake out. Um, God, fifth I'm going to give to... Actually, you know what? What? What are you thinking? I'm going to make you stop right there. Okay. Hold on. I have an I, idea. I guess I'm stopping. Oh, you yous be stopping right now. Yous be stopping. What are you thinking of, Josh? I'm going to pull up the groups. And we're going to go by who wins the group? Yeah, we'll go through the groups. We will go through the groups. Oh, we're going in depth. It's our only opportunity to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I should have been more prepared and had this up before. And that's on me. My apologies, listeners. Oh, I guess we can talk about how uh, Straight Rippin is currently in like a mini boot camp in preparation for Atlanta. 
They're in a house Didn't and everything. Their, yeah, I was going to say they got a house, yep. right? They're stateside, yeah. Because if you guys don't know, the straight ripping lineup, as we've discussed before, is an, a full EU lineup this time around for the first time ever for straight ripping. So that's going to be pretty goddamn insane. Insane in the membrane. Got no brain. Will I am. That's the qualified teams that I don't give a shit. Where the fuck is it? Josh cannot find his data. I need to scroll through. Why don't you fuckers just pin this tweet? God damn it. Okay, <laughs> we're good. We're good. Woo! All right, we're back on track. This show has been a fucking clusterfuck. I can tell you that much. We've been doing all right. Oh, we've been doing great. It's just like, I'm, I'm, you're ill. I'm out of it. It's, oh man. Okay. Group A. All right. All right. You ready? Yeah. Will. Group A, we have Tox, Accelerate, LTN, which could be half the roster fucking changed, and then an open bracket team. Now keep in mind, we have some open bracket teams that are going to try to come up, one of them being Lux Gaming with Nated. Okay? So, what do you think? What do you think happens in this group? What do you think? Um, Well, you never know where those open bracket teams are going to land, so it's hard to predict... Um, but I'm going to say, you know, Tox is going to take that one for sure. Yeah, I can see that as well. And then I'm going to say that because I think it's two group teams that come out that go to the championship bracket. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Accelerate. Yeah. By far. I don't, especially, especially if LTN is having like half a fucking roster change right now after, after the deadlock already happened. Are you fucking kidding me? That could be detrimental. Good luck. Like here, here comes he to Josh again. Okay. Oh boy. No, I'm fucking, I'm irritated. It's you guys have. Okay. Okay. Let's Josh, calm down a second. (laughs) If there were life circumstances that made it so you could not attend. Okay. If, if you were, if, if something happened to you, if something happened to a family member, if you had prior commitments, whatever it may be, something that directly affects your life, I completely understand. I'm not shitting on you. You're 100% fine. Life gets in the way. But if you were deciding not to compete because you just decided you don't want to compete, fuck off. That's what I'm going to say about that. So for LTN, just looking at this. Based like statistically, if you lose half of your what was supposed to be a confirmed roster for two different players, I'm I'm sorry, I don't think I don't think that happens for you. I think it's going to be Tox and Accelerate easily moving on in this group. I think if LTN wants to move on, they're going to have a big uphill battle, and anything can happen, right? Like they could come out extremely hot. It's what the fuck. What matchup was it at Worlds last year? Um, well, not last year. Worlds this year. <laughs> was it... Uh, oh, my God. Berserker against Splice? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and Berserker, like... Wait, no, 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 not Berserker. Oh, my God. Was it the French squad? It might have been the French squad. It was a squad with SLG on it, I thought. Either way, there was a team that was doing work... Like, really, really close games that nobody was talking about against Splice. And I'm like, yes, I get that this isn't Championship Sunday Splice that we're dealing with. But the fact that you're doing that to them, they're a world's team. And you're and you're doing really, really well against them. So, I don't mean to be rude by any means necessary. Anything can happen in these tournaments. LTN could definitely just come in... People could take it for granted, like I am right now, and they could come in extremely hot and cause an upset. But do I think it'll happen? No. Maybe against an open bracket team that comes up. Maybe. We'll see. We'll have to see. Who who do we got in Group B? Group B consists of Splice, Trifecta, Down Under, and an open bracket team. It's hard to bet against Splice. They're an easy number one pick out of this group. Um, Trifecta and down under. We've seen the Australia and New Zealand team surprise us every once in a while. We have. 
Um, it's hard with the the caliber that Trifecta brings. It's hard to vote against them mm-hmm. when it comes to going up against Down Under. But like I like you, like I've said, like you've said, anything can happen on any given series. Um, but I I would give it to Trifecta. It was Berserk and Madzy on that um, Mind Freak, that Mind Freak roster, right? Yeah. I don't. I know Barcode wasn't on there, but I don't think Slays was either, or was he? I don't recall. But either way, at least a couple of them have been teaming for quite a while. They're the they're the top talent that Australia New Zealand has to offer, and they're nothing to be trifled with. So, I think. Splice, like you said, easily comes out of that group with a number one spot. Okay. As long as, as long as they don't take any game lightly. That's the big thing. It's like what I talked about earlier. There was a team who was doing very, very well against them in the group stages. Okay. If Splice come out full bore, there's nothing stopping them getting out of this group. Okay. When we get into champ bracket, things are going to be a little bit different, but for this group, for sure, them. I think the only, this is, I think this is the group. This is the group that the open bracket team has the best chance to get the second spot. Sure. I think this is the only group that they have a really good chance. A really good chance. Like if, if Lux Gaming gets into group B, I, them and Trifecta are going to be the, like the ones to, skirmish to get that second spot especially try trifecta is one of those teams where we don't know what's going on there's com- some confusion around the roster after the the nemesis tweet yep so they might not be going in with a full roster who the hell knows we'll have to wait and see on that that's gonna if destroyed was legitimate in his tweet that's something to watch out for because that's a that's a guaranteed pool spot that could be completely left open at that point if they don't have subs. Yeah. Fuck a final. That's going to be that's going to be crazy. All right, do you want group C, Will? What do we got? Group C consists of Reciprocity, Straight Ripping, Mentality, and another open bracket team. I think this might be the most difficult to choose from. In terms of first and second or in terms of just second? I would say both. Um, Mentality showed in that 2K that they can hang at the top. Um, Very true statement. If they are still feeling that fire and reciprocity starts slow like um, I've seen them do, Mentality can come out and take a win off of them. Um, Especially, you know, they're, what, three-game series then? It's easy to drop a couple games and, whoops, that that happened quick, you know? Yep. Um, I... I love reciprocity because I'm, I'm such a fan of those players, but I can't get past the fact they've been inconsistent and slow to start at times. Oh yeah. And it's, it's, they've been consistently inconsistent. Yeah. And it's, it's frustrating because they are such high caliber players. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes me think that uh, there's just something they need something else. I don't know what it is. Um, because you have a great coach, you have great teammates, I just I don't understand why they they're not even competing with Tox. Well, they are competing with Tox, but competing up with Splice even more. Um, I just I don't know. But that's what makes me think that this is the bracket where anything can happen. Yeah, this is a scary one for sure, and I think this is the best reason why we have so much like so many scrim results in regards to reciprocity is that we've seen the trends of that team, right? We've seen that they're not objectively consistent. Okay. Yeah. They, they overslay and don't push the objective when they should. Exactly. We've seen it time and time again in scrim results with talks with any other team. They're great at slaying, but that's, that's half the game. Like you got to play the objective well and based off some scrim results we've seen, that's not what they've been doing. They haven't been consistent with objective play. 
They're going to need to do that if they want to try to remain on top. It's as simple as that. Straight ribbon mentality. That, to me, I can... <sighs> Straight ripping, no Jimbo. Okay. He's been one of the most prolific EU Halo players ever. And that's not discounting anybody else on that straight ripping roster by any means necessary. I wanted to note something about Jimbo. What's up? Uh, I've still been following him and he's been playing some Black Ops. Yeah. And he tweeted that he's like, I can't believe how lazy I got in Halo 5 after three years. Which makes me think he could have been an even better player than what he was because he, he when he switched games and was putting the grind in, he was like, he, he, he realized, he's like, yeah, I got lazy in Halo because I'd just been in it for too long. And he's still one of the better players in that game, too, if you in, think about in, it. Yeah, so, wow. It's crazy to think what he could have done if he, uh, I guess, put in that work that he, he knew he could. So now the question is, did Straight Rippin put in that work? We're going to find out in Atlanta for sure. Do you have mentality over Straight Rippin at this point? Yep. You do? I do. What if Lux ends up in this pool? Ooh, fuck. That's hard. Okay. Um, because that's that's Nated Squad mm, coming out. You know what? No. Nope. It's not hard. I still stick with mentality in this situation. What about Lux over Straight Rippin? Do you think they would pull out a better record in this pool? That would be a closer series. That would be a very close series. But but you think if they, they end up in this pool, they get eliminated because of mentality I and do. reciprocity. I do. I think that Lux's best chance is in Group B. Even looking at Group D, which we'll talk about shortly, I, I think that if Lux breaks out of the open bracket, which they will. like in, in my opinion, I think Lux will definitely be one of the four open bracket teams. Yeah, I think they have the skill. Yep. They're constantly in that... They're constantly in that fifth through eighth 2K placing consistently. Therefore, they, they will make it out of open. They will be one of the groups in, in one of the groups. I think the only real chance they have to make it out of the top one, two in, in, in a group is group B. So going back to group C here, I'm, I meant exactly what I said. I think if if they did if Lux made it into Group C, I think it'd be very close between them and Straight. But considering Lux have been fifth through eighth in all these two Ks mainly, and Mentality hasn't, I think I think it's reciprocity and Mentality coming out of that group. I do. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'll say. And that's and I don't. I don't think that any of these, like the other two teams in in the groups are eliminated. They just go to the losers bracket then. Or or are they in the champ? Oh my God, am I that dumb? Are they, do they go to the champ bracket and then if they lose, they go to losers bracket and then if they lose again, they're completely out? Is it group play and then a double elimination bracket? That's my question. Yeah. I'm I don't know. I'm confused on it right now. I think that's what it is. I think it's group play and then a double elimination bracket. Yeah. So they have multiple chances to stay. Yep, it's just if they make it through. They get a better placing in the champ bracket. That's all it is. If you get top 1 2, you get better placing. You get better seeds in the champ yeah, bracket. It's all about seeding. Yeah. But even it's so, exactly what it is. if they don't, um, to fight all the way from, you know, first round of loser's bracket oh, back. It's oh, it's going to be fucking terrifying. It would be, it's, that's, that's uphill both ways in a mm -hmm. shit storm. I mean, it, it, that would be terrifying to try to, to, to beat all those teams. Yep. But if someone could do it, God, that would, that would be the most amazing thing ever. Would be. Be the story of a lifetime. It would be, especially for the last Halo 5 tournament. All right, who do you have? 
as your top two coming out of this group C? I would have to agree with you. Um, Renegade or Reciprocity and uh, I'm moving on to group D already, I guess. You are? Uh, Reciprocity and Mentality. I think uh, Mentality would would take straight ripping. Okay. And then finally for group D, we have Renegades, Elevate, Shock the World, and an open bracket team. What do you got here? Um, Renegades number one for sure. The caliber they've been playing at, they uh, they're forced to reckon with. They want that number one spot. They do. They've been after Tox, APG. Oh, oh he wants it so he bad. He wants man. it so bad, yeah. and I I'm wondering if if you know if splice isn't an issue, if this is the one where they do it. Um. But yeah, I'm gonna give the first place to Renegades out of Group D. And then, um, yeah, I think Elevate over, what was the other team? Shock the World. Shock the World. The only LATAM uh, confirmed group roster. And LATAM, um, they've done well recently, is, or, it, you know, coming over and I don't. Uh, they have. They have done well. But. But it's Elevate. It's a. That's it. That's it's, it right there. You got Ace, L Town, Spartan, and uh, Sabinator. Uh, I don't think they can take them. I think uh, Elevate comes out of that. So, the reason why I kept saying that Lux Gaming has the best chance in Group B is because I, I swear, if they got into Group D, I think Elevate would beat them. I really do. Elevate are constantly in that uh, 5 6 spot. 3 4 of- 5 6. They're always in that area with Renegades. Like, realistically, Elevate's a 3-4 team. I may not have thought that before, but, like, they're... They almost... uh, They almost knocked Reciprocity out of that 2K. One kill didn't go their way, and now you have to nut up in those situations. But it's like... they're, They're a tough team, too. They really are. They got Ace now. They got Elevace. Elevace. That a- that uh graphic they put out with it was great with, with the card with the yeah the yeah. Ace oh uh, the Ace card and oh uh, that, that's almost like tattoo. The Ace of Spades. Oh, that's almost like tattoo worthy. Ace should go get that tattooed on his he uh, should on his form. I think he even commented and said, "All right, this looks sick." Yeah, something like that, right? It did. It really did. Yeah. But yeah, um, nope, I agree. And we're always, we always seem to be in agreement. But see, we're always wrong in terms of like the top placings. Yeah, something always gets screwed up. I think we're going to be right on these groups though. Okay. Because like realistically, these don't mean anything, you know what I mean? Sure. Like we have the double elimination bracket anyway after this, so it doesn't matter for fucking right or wrong because every team, every team survives. Technically, yes. Yeah. Who gives a shit? We can say whatever the fuck we want. Shock the world, taking first in their group. Just kidding. It's not not happening. I mean, hey, if it did, it'd be fucking rad. That'd be crazy. But I don't think it's... I don't think it's gonna happen. All right. So predictions for the tournament, then. Okay. I already kind of said mine earlier. Go ahead. Do it up. Top eight. Go. We're at Splice Talks, Renegades, Reciprocity. Um, Let's throw... um, let me look at the teams. Um, yeah, let's put Elevate. In the fifth spot? In the fifth spot, why not? Okay. Mentality. In the sixth, okay. Two more. Let's do Accelerate. I was waiting for that one. Okay. And let's say straight rip and breaks into eighth. You think so? Why not? Okay. Give them some credit. Trifecta is not top eight. No. Okay. Nah. (laughs) Sorry, Trifecta Will does not have faith in you guys. And guess what? I might not either. So let's get into it. You got to look at... um, What's up? You have to look at Trifecta possibly having roster issues. 
Yep. Oh, I understand. You also have to look at, uh, um, you know, they haven't been the most consistent of teams, and I, uh, I just think that I don't know. I don't. I don't. I see other teams just breaking through. That's all. Oh, I can agree with that for sure. All right, well, you're right for mine. Yeah. All right. So Will took the casual route. I am going with the. I'm fucking balls to the wall right now. All right. All right. What do you got? My conservative pick, Tox. First place. Okay. I'm going to say Tox wins the tournament. Okay. Second place, Reciprocity. They're not going to fail this time around until we get to the grand finals, but they will get second at this tournament. Okay. I want them to get first, but I think Tox is just, I think Tox is the best team in Halo 5. Okay. I know people will say Splice are the best team in Halo 5, but I, with the amount of work and effort and just grind that the Tox roster have put into this game, I truly believe that they are the best team in Halo 5. So, Tox first. Reciprocity second. <sighs> Splice third. Because they have to be up there. Who knocks Splice into third? Reciprocity or Tox? I want it to be Reciprocity, but it's going to be Tox. But that means that Reciprocity is sitting in champ bracket sure. waiting for... Fuck it. Who cares? Tox. And Tox comes through in a, in a double best of seven and beats them. Okay. But you think Reci- so? You th- you th- you think Reciprocity is going to storm through <laughs> just, and win just out? Just make it to the grand finals, then shit the bed. I'm sorry. I gotta I gotta throw a wrench into your logic here. Fuck. You know what? No, I'll go back. God no, no, don't. It. Keep going. Keep going. Because no, I- because I no because. But we've seen Reciprocity beat Splice before, and we've seen we have. we've seen Tox do it. Splice. Aren't, but then when they come through losers, they fucking just they get pissed. They destroy. But Tox has they're had, a mean team. Tox has had an answer for them. So it, it did last tournament. I don't. I'm not calling like bullshit on your your theory. No, no, here. you're fine. You're fine. I'm just I I can totally see what you're saying happening because of what we've seen in the past. Yeah. Reciprocity, yeah, I call them inconsistent. I say that as a detriment to them. But this could be the one time where they're on fire and just run the table. It's possible. I think the only way... I think the only way that any team has a chance... I'm going to say Tox and Reciprocity, okay? I might even throw Renegades in this conversation as well. But I think any team to beat Splice... If you want to knock Splice out of the tournament, completely, okay? I mean completely. The only way to do that is to knock them into losers as late as possible. You cannot send Splice into losers right away. Because based off the times that we've seen it happen, they run a fucking train. And the worst part is is that that means that they have even more practice than you do coming up to the matchup again where they face you off again. I always thought it was weird that the winner has to sit so long. Like, that would drive me nuts. That would throw me off not playing at that high level. But see, you're talking about grand finals? Yeah. But see, that's the point, though, is that you have the advantage of having the first best of seven. So, like, you only need to win one more best of seven. Sure. When your opponent has to reset that bracket and then go another one. Cause yeah, because it's double ELA and you technically haven't lost at that point. Exactly. Now, but I, I agree with what you're saying. I see exactly where you're coming from, where man, I like that that time where your hands aren't warmed up, you don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. Yeah, and I guess they're like like I said, there's side stations and whatnot, but again Yeah, they have a practice room too, like in the back. Yeah, so. but you, again, you're not playing against teams. No. Nope. That are pushing that hard. Well, splice 2v2 each other anyway, so do you really need to? 
go on this tangent again. I, I mean, I, I, you know where I'm coming from. Splight, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so ba- back to the predictions here. Tox first, reciprocity second, splice third. Okay? How this all happens? Fuck if I know. All right? Fuck if I know. But I'm just going to say that's what that's going to be. All right? And I'm probably going to be the wrong one in all this shit. So first Tox, second reciprocity, third splice. Fourth is Renegades. Renegades, I'm sorry. Because I know how good of a team you are. But I have you at fourth. And so there there you go. All right. It gets a little tricky after this. It does. Fifth. Oh shit. Do 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 Um This is really hard. This is really hard. Okay, fuck it. Um fifth is elevate. Sixth accelerate. Seventh mentality, eighth straight. Okay, so we have the same teams in the top eight just switched around a little bit. Yes. I don't think Trifecta make, makes top eight. I don't think Lux makes top eight either. I don't think Shock. I don't think Down Under, LTN, any other open bracket team makes it top eight. Fair enough. We both had straight eighth. Did we both have mentality seventh? No. What did you have mentality as? I think I had them at sixth. Who was your seventh? Accelerate? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Pretty sure. We'll have to listen back. I think so too. Okay. So we have a couple flip flopped. Yeah. In in the bottom four. But yeah. You think Splice wins it? I just think they have too much skill. And they're really all, fucking it's, good. It's all individual skill, too. Yeah, they're um, really good. I, uh, Tox is consistently said to beat Splice. You have to play their game. And they did it that last tournament. And they did. They yep. played aggressive the whole fucking time. And, uh, yep, it does come down. I mean, you still, not only is it playing aggressive, but you still got to hit your shots and you got to, you know, move well. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I see the potential for Tox to do that. I don't see the potential for reciprocity to kick up. They kind of play their game. So, yeah, that's why I, that's why I have Splice 1. Do I want them to win? I don't. But I think they're going to. You don't want them to. I'm not a fan of Splice. I'm just... It, so who know. do you want to win then? Who do you want to win the whole thing? I would be fine with Tox or Reciprocity. I'm I'm a Pistola fan. So that's I'm rooting for Pistola and Reciprocity. Tox has been what, what I think is the model for a Halo team. For an esports team in general. They've stuck together for years... It's a way to build a brand and the way you get people to stick to an eSport. When you have a team that's together and you know and you like and you can um, root for that brand. Um, that's what I think something eSports, I could dive deep in this, but I, that's something I think eSports is missing is they, sure, we have all these teams, but they have different players on them consistently and no one really knows who they are. And sure, you can like... a. Uh, um, you know, you can like your optic gaming cause you know, they're always going to pick up the best team, but it's harder to care about the team members when it's consistently changing. Well, you talk about optic gaming, their COD roster really hasn't changed much right. and their gears roster hasn't changed at all. Right. So that's, those are cases where 
that's that's what I like to see. Yeah. But it's not across the board that way no. at all. We no. see all these other organizations coming in and out and it makes uh it makes it harder to follow. The fact I know the same thirty two teams are in the NFL every year and you know, their star players are probably going to be their star players for a while. They're not going to let them go. That It's easier to follow and root for someone that way than it yeah. is kind of with the esports scene right now where everything jumbles around so much. Um, so that's – it's it's weird to say, but that's why I like Tox is because they've stuck together and they've been through the, the grind together. They've put in their time. They, they, they do deserve to be at the top. I like Pistola just because – I don't know what it is, but I'm a fan of the 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 man, the myth, the wizard. He's uh, I he's think, just a humble fucking dude. He, yeah, he is very humble. Um, I don't know what I just I'm a fan of his. Yeah. So that's why I root for reciprocity. Plus, snipe down's been great. Um, you know, you put that sniper in his hands, and he's he's lethal. He's he, it's gonna be uh, uh, <laughs> oh Josh, man. You put the sniper in his hands, he becomes lethal. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I heard what you mean. Oh God, uh, he's he's. They're he, one in the same. Will <sighs> snipe down and lethal, one in the same. Never thought I'd hear it on this show. Anyway, you guys know what I mean. He he's great with a sniper. It's what he's known yeah, for. Yeah. Um. We have Trippy and Saiyan, which are the new kind of the younger members of the squad not yep. necessarily new to the scene but younger members of the squad that yep. um, can provide that new mentality maybe they can uh, keep up with that splice movement And I mean Pistola the way he moves around a map has always been incredible oh yeah for um, sure he just yeah the way it's weird the way splice, is, splice moves is so different than what we've seen and I, we've seen Tox catch on to it. I feel like I'm rambling here. You're fine. Go ahead. But we've seen Tox, ta, 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 ta. we've seen Tox catch on to Splice's movement and started to emulate it themselves. Yep. Um, it's just if they can keep that up and keep the pressure on Splice, and because sure, like I said, you can emulate the movement, but then it's about hitting your shots and making the moves at the right times. Um. It's hoping they can keep that movement up without losing their ability to shoot and move the right way. The right way. Yeah. No, I agree. It's like you said, it it's like you said what Tox said. The only way to beat them is by playing their own game. That's it's simple as that. If any team wants to beat them, they have to play their game. And uh it was at what well, I think it was in our um, clutch interview or onset in, onset interview, where um, Splice had said they they really don't feel anyone else is playing Halo Five to its potential. Everyone's still stuck in Halo Three in two days, and they're not using the abilities in Halo Five to their best advantage, and that's why they've been so dominant. So now that other teams are starting to catch on. I'm hoping I see it at this last event because I feel like every team should be pushing for that number one spot. Yep. No matter what you think, Lux Gaming, Trifecta, those who don't believe in you, make make them believe in you at this event because... Calling me out. Yeah. Well, myself included. Um, you know, it's the last one. Just put it all out there. Not that you don't every time, but especially this time, you got to get out there and, and go for that win. Think about it this way. Nated's on Lux. Nated has yet to win. Yet to win a major event. This is it. You think this is the one? (laughs) Nated, this is the one. Come out hot. Prove everyone wrong. That would be incredible. I would... Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd lose my scream. Shit. I, I would scream. Yeah, if, if uh, I've uh, I've been a Nated fan too. I I bought one of his shirts. I have it. Yep. I used to wear it all the time. I think it's stowed away, so I don't mess it up in the closet. But um, you're gonna wear it over the I'm weekend. Gonna, I'm gonna wear it this weekend when Lux is playing. Yep. Because God damn it, I want to see you guys make a move. And you know what? Let's look back. Allegiance. First ever Halo 5 World Champions, World Championships. 
CLG versus Allegiance in the Grand Finals. You guys got whooped on. Okay? If it's a, you're saying it's going to be a Tox Lux? For Fuck now? yes. Fuck yes. Nated gets his revenge. It's like full circle. Back from yep. first year worlds all full the way around. Full fucking circle. Yes. <laughs> We're calling it right now. First place Lux Gaming. Second place Tox. Fuck the rest of the place things. They don't matter. This is <laughs> this is the one. Holy shit. How crazy would that be? That would be intense. That'd be insane. It, that would be like storybook watching Lux come through everything. Oh my god. Everything just clicks for him right off the bat. They whoop through the open bracket like it's fucking nothing. Get into group stage. Oh, hey, Splice. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking whoop group B to get like their top placing in the champ bracket. Fucking, oh, hey, reciprocity. And I think we've gone off the rails a little too much here. To the loser's bracket. We're not done here, Will. Lux Gaming. They're making moves. All right. They're making moves. We'll have to wait and see. The, the classic. That's like our fucking tagline. HGS Pro Talk. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> it's so true, though. because. It is. I mean, we, we can sit here and speculate and predict all we want, but the fact of the matter is, is we'll have to see who comes to play this weekend. I really hope that, and, like, I'm selling Lux short, selling Trifecta short and all this. I feel like, I, like putting them down there, I feel the same way because I don't feel like the skill gap it's is not that, that big. It's not that far. They're right there. Um, I'll go back to my, my mind is a very st statistical mind. And I see that these other teams have been winning more than Lux and trifecta. So I got to put them ahead. It's true. It's true. And I think that like you having, you having splice winning, right? It's that's, I'm not going to say it's a cop out, but it's, it's a smart answer. You know, it's, they're consistent. They're one of the best teams in the world. They are the best team in the world right now. They've won back to back world championships. Okay. You look at you look at Tox. They were back to back world champions at one point as well. They've won consistently. They have I, I didn't say this before, but I'll say it now. They have Frosty, right? You said that one of one of the ways that you beat Splice is playing their own game. What people might not realize is that when Tox, which was previously Optic Gaming, which was previously CLG, when they picked up Frosty. He was that new kid on the block. He was that one that was finding these jumps that nobody fucking had any idea existed. Getting to places on the map that nobody thought it, like would be able to be reached. And he found them. He utilized that Halo 5 tool set better than anybody else in the game at that point in time. And he still continues to do so. There aren't many things to discover anymore, but he was at the forefront of discovering those things in the first place. So having that individual on your team, when you have the likes of Royal 2 and Snakebite and Lethal, who've been around for a very long time in the competitive space for Halo, and you bring in that new talent, they took the world by storm. Nobody, I, nobody had any idea how to play against them because Frosty went fucking off all the time and they played so fucking consistently with one another. Then you had Splice come in. Right? It, it was always... I mean, Allegiance did really well in the first year of Halo 5 Esports. Okay? People thought they were the favorite to win until that CLG roster was starting to make really big moves. Okay? Then it was EG. It was EG and CLG at that time. Then EG and Optic. And everyone thought, oh, those are the top two teams. Eventually, we got to a point where skill gaps were lessening. Then you have Enigma 6 come in, right? You got Boo Boo Doo Boo. I think Renegade was on that roster at one point in time. Like you have these, you have these up and coming kids. You're like, oh, they're really, they're really fucking individually skilled. This is crazy. Then we saw that splice roster form, not the one we know right now, 
But we had a previous Splice roster form at one point in time that had Shooter on it as well. They were pretty fucking good. Making moves. And then we see this team. We see that Splice team change a little bit. And we see... You have Eco and Stellar, who've been around for a while. Because, yeah, didn't they didn't they win DreamHack Atlanta with Shooter? And then yeah. they dropped him for Eco. Yep. Yep. So then... So you have Renegade who people were calling Renegade at the time when he was on Straight Rippin', right? Yep. And, like, he was a fucking powerhouse. This kid comes out of nowhere, he's tearing shit up. It's crazy. Then you have this Shotzi kid come in. You hear the rumblings around, Halo, like, the Halo Esports Twitter, like, the forums, Reddit, so on and so forth. And you're like, guys, this Shotzi kid's going to be doing big things. Just wait. And everybody's, and you wouldn't think it like, oh, the kid's like, like starting out, whatever. Right. Then he was what Frosty was doing, but in a whole new fucking light. Change the game. That splice team changed how Halo 5 was played the way Frosty did way back. When Halo 5 released. They still changed the game. Three years later. Like that's insane. So to hold them. Bringing it all back. Right. The skill gap is lessening. Which is great. But you still. Have those top two. That can't be denied. In Splice and Tox. And yeah, I put I put Splice in third this time because while I think they're still going to be a fucking dominant force, I think that the practice might show this time for reciprocity, and I think that they're gonna they're gonna have an edge here. I think so. But like we talked about with the skill gaps lessening, I would love to see trifecta Lux mentality accelerate, elevate. Fucking shock the world. Any of these teams come in and make make a make a wave. Just hit hit a great team fucking hard. And just be like, no, I'm here to compete. This is this is my time. And really prove themselves at this tournament. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have sorry, go ahead. Oh no. I was just to end my to end my spiel. Yeah, we're going to have more tournaments down the line. Yes, Infinite is around the corner, a couple years out, whatever it may be. Yes, we might have more, not Halo 5, but other Halo tournaments as well. But this is the last Halo 5 tournament in an official capacity. This is it. DreamHack. One of the world's biggest gaming conventions. This is it. This is your time to prove yourself and really just make your name known. That's where I end my spiel. Will, there you go. I want to see players get fired up for this, knowing it's the last Halo 5 event. I want to see that Ryan Noob Spartan trash rivalry, talking? trash Fuck talking. Yes. I want to see more of it between other players, more yelling, more screaming, because this is like, this is it. Put it out there. Just do it. Show that you want to do it, that you want to get to the top. And the, it'll just make it better for everyone else. I'm just saying. Can I just paint a picture for you, Will? Sure. Over the weekend, there was a Gears of War tournament that took place. Okay? Gears of War players are known for their trash talking. Oh, yeah. And the best part is, it all comes through on stream. They don't dilute it. They don't bleep anything out. It's all there. Okay? And for the record, they still have more viewers than fucking people playing Halo. So... And this wasn't even a major event, okay? But it was Optic Gaming, obviously, versus this team that not a lot of people knew about in the grand finals. This this team had beat out Ghost Gaming, had beat out, uh, I think, Space Station Gaming, had beat out multiple big-name teams to make it to the grand finals against Optic Gaming, the best team in Gears of War, okay? It's a best of three for map, Okay? First team to win two out of three maps wins the grand finals, unless the bracket gets reset. First map. 
I think it's first to seven rounds. It goes to round 14. Optic Gaming just clutched it out. Okay. The thing that people need to realize when it comes to Gears of War and Optic Gaming is that if they take a tiebreaker round off you, and this is a grand final scenario, they're going to run a fucking train. And that's exactly what they did. I have a point to the story, so don't worry. Map 2 starts. We're up 5 nothing now. Optic Gaming is. They have two more rounds to win to win the whole tournament. One person on their team, after every round, is getting up. And they're sitting at like a... a it's not a main stage, either. It's like a... Like a, a quote-unquote side station type scenario, Okay. He stands up, points over to the other person on the other team, and starts fucking trash-talking his ear off. Like he said, you're fucking trash! Go the fuck home! You don't fucking belong here! Like the whole time. Oh, shit. Over and over, every round. Every round. And uh, and I think he said, bro, quit fucking sleeping. What the fuck are you doing? Wake the fuck up! This is, this is Grand Files, baby. Wake the fuck up! You're fucking trash! The whole time. Okay. Round six happens. Optic wins round six. Okay. Dude stands up one more time, points across to one person on the other team and starts screaming at him. The dude on the other team uh, is sitting there. I don't think he stands up and he's like, all right, all right, it's, it's time. It's fucking right now. I'm going to destroy every motherfucker on your team. Just wait. Watch this. This round. This fucking round. Right here. Right now. And uh, and the dude's like, all right, all right, all right, let's fucking wait and see. So round seven starts, right? Long story short, Optic wins. Okay. They win round seven. It's a 7-0. But the thing is, at the end of it, the dude that was being screamed at the whole time and like said, he was smiling the whole fucking time. And he, and he, uh, he went over to them at the end of the game. The whole team did. They're giving high fives. They're giving fist bumps. You know, they're giving handshakes, so on and so forth. They're saying they're GGs. It's all in good fun. That's, that's really the point I'm trying to get. Yeah, that, that Spartan Ryan noob thing, that was real. But most of this is all in good fun. Yeah. You know, they're there to play a video game. They're there to win some money. They're there to boost their pride. They're there to hoist that trophy up. Put your fucking heart and soul into it, man. We see that. We feed off that. As spectators, yes. Yeah, and, and I, even I love I'm sure, seeing it. I'm sure other players do, too. It gets you like, fired up. When you see Spartans stand up, like if they if Elevate takes a fucking round off trifecta, right, during that series, mm-hmm. Spartan gets off, spouting words off to fucking Ryan Noob across the stage, pumping his team up. That's what they need, man. That's what you fucking need. And me, if I'm if I'm a different team sitting watching that, I'm like, oh, Spartan's here to play. I need to step up today. Like, that, that gets myself fired up. Yeah, exactly. My, my fiance is in the room when I'm playing video games all the time. But if I'm, if, if I went around a blackout, if, you know, me and, uh, me and Joey come in first place, I'm standing up and screaming. <laughs> We're, we, me and Joey now do game chat. So when we kill players, they can hear us and we're talking trash the whole time just cause that's fun. You can do that now. And we, we take it too. I mean, I take plenty of trash talk when I die. So you got to give it back. And it's, it's all in, it is all in good fun. That's just part of it. It gets exactly. gets you amped up. It keeps you going. It's the same thing in football games too. Oh yeah. Like when when you're on the defensive end and you're fucking you get in for a tackle and you just fucking bring his ass down, right? You're right in his face. You're saying, "Oh, not today, not today." Got you there. And then at the end of the game, they're giving their fist bumps and whatnot. Like, yeah, it was yeah. fucking fun, man. Yeah, it's all it's all part of the game. Um, that's why we could go on forever about sports <laughs> yeah. and, but what happens in game, you have to separate from what's real reality outside the game. If you just, you know, if you're trash talking in the game, it's all for the fun of the game and, you know, trying for the, for the sport. It's not for, it's not meant to be personal, even though it kind of feels personal because it's, it's you. It's to get in your head. It's to get yeah, in the opponent's head. Right. And that's, that's exactly part of it. Yep. So anyway, that was another long rant on trash talking sorry will any other predictions well for teams i would say 
for for Atlanta itself, I'm excited for the news that they said they're going to be releasing for yeah. HCS moving forward. We didn't even talk about the 2v2 showdown. We haven't, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next. Do you have any... So like you said, in the qualifiers, those main teams we've seen from before didn't break into the top. Do you think they do at Atlanta on land? That is their that is their territory. It's what they're known for. But you know what? I think it's like what Clutch was saying in the interview. It's it's that it could just come down to the people who've been playing it consistently since MCC released. Hell, even before that, it didn't matter. They just didn't stop playing it. You have Evader, who's been around for a very long time, consistently getting in the top one, two of these qualifiers. You have Gun Type, his teammate, consistently top one, two. You have Gabriel and Fantasy, consistently top one, two. And, like, yeah, this last qualifier didn't go like that way for these two teams, but they're consistent. And what we keep talking about is consistency. Therefore, if they're able to make that transition to LAN, it's, I think it definitely could be one of them. I can't wait to see these older players come back. I think it's going to be great. Don't get me wrong. And I'll be cheering for them no matter what. But if we're, if we're looking at statistics and we're going based off consistency, then it very well will be one of these, one of these teams that we're seeing in these qualifiers week in, week out that are going to make those runs through the tournament. I agree. I agree. What I would like to see, I mean, I'd like to see older pros take it, right? Obviously. I think Roy coming back would be fucking cool to see him win this. He retired. But, uh, no, seriously, I think that, I think it'd be Vader and Gun Type 1. I think it'd be pretty fucking cool. Because they've, they've struggled. Um, they've been mainly Game 5s, but, like, they've struggled to close out that last game in that Game 5 series to take the qualifier. Mm-hmm. multiple times and i think it'd be really cool to see them like just get over that last hurdle you know what i mean sure take that first place spot solidify themselves as that champ so all right so i'll say for that what about you i guess i like you said it would be cool to see the old, pro- old pros compete but i do think that you know the the teams that have been consistently playing halo 3 and have been at the top of these boards are going to take it home okay any specific players to look out for? For Halo Five. Halo Five. Yep. I think we kind of know who's who at this point. Um. You think anyone might cause an upset? I'm. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure with the way things have been going lately. It's uh, hard to say what's going to happen at this event. If I was to do, if I was to do one. Give one. I think I'm... Ex- I, I think I'm... I think I'm selling Accelerate a little bit too short. I think Boo Boo Doo Boo has a lot left to give in terms of Halo 5. So, I think he's definitely going to be one to watch this tournament. If I was to give one. Because like you said, we do know basically everybody else what they're capable of doing. But I I think I'm selling Accelerate short. Like, more short than other teams here. You know what, fuck, I'll give two. I think that I put Straight Rip in his eight in mine, but... They got some good players on that roster, man. That's tough. Those placings are fucking tough, like we talked about. And Demon Diaz on that Demon Diaz on the Accelerate roster as well. Shit. Gilkey is on that Lux Gaming roster. Two older pros that have been around for quite some time. If DMD was able to get back on top as well, that'd be crazy to see. Yeah, there there's there's definitely some people on these teams that are like You got you got left you got a lot left in the tank. I'm excited to see what Atlanta brings. I think it's going to be the closest we've had for a tournament. Yeah. I, th- I feel like this might be one of the, the tournaments where watching the group play 
the pool play, it's all just going to be exciting. I fucking hope so, because every basically every other group play match that we've watched and whatnot for every other tournament has been 3-0 blowouts. Yeah. I'd, like, fucking every time. Mm-hmm. I want to, like, like I said, the, the more competition, bring more hype to the, the event, make it more exciting. I want to see these tournaments go past midnight. Yeah. Because every fucking series is a game five. That'd be, that'd be insane. Oh man. But yeah, I, I really do think that not just because this is the, the last Halo five tournament, but the game's been out for three years, right? I do think this is the closest the competition has ever been. I really do. So if there was ever a tournament where games were going to be close, it has to be this one. But yeah. And obviously, based off those uh, qualifiers for the 2v2, that could be really close as well. Could be very, very close. Mainly every grand final in those qualifiers have been game fives. It really could be a close tournament there too. I'm so, I am so fucking happy they're both being broadcasted. Like, oh my God. I'm so happy. Will is about to fall asleep. So, Will, is there anything else you would like to add before we get to the end of the show here? I guess I'm, I'm hoping Atlanta's just, uh, I hope they broadcast it and do it right from DreamHack. Um, you know, I think HCS London was uh, a great event to take from. You know, with the the little things they had in between matches to keep people entertained, because um, as much as the the playing keeps us excited, sw- switching between teams and getting teams set up takes a long time in Halo Five. We know that at this point. Just hope there's more entertainment in between, rather than the same four commercials. Yeah, like that London event ran over. Yeah, it was great. Where they had the different. I mean, yeah, it was weird. Them eating wings and looking at Halo Five maps, but it it's something it's something different, and I like it. Was it was sick. So yeah, I'm just hoping that it's it's done well. Being it's the last Halo Five event, I hope it just meets all the expectations. And it, it and you know the the two v two showdown. I feel like a lot of people want to see this. It's classic Halo being played on a tournament level. Um. I'm excited. I'm curious at what the viewership's going to be for that, considering it's after the Halo 5 play. Um, I honestly think that's the best time to have it. Because if you think about it, more players or more more viewers turn in towards the end when the games are getting more serious. Um, you know, they'll see, oh, Halo's streaming a tournament. You know, they'll, they might be on Twitch and not realize the tournament's happening. Tune in, watch the rest of it. Then, oh, there's a Halo 3 tournament? stay for that type of thing rather than it being at the beginning and then nobody knows or sees it. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see what that Halo three tournament brings in terms of viewership. And cause I, th- I think it's a test for, um, the HCS and, you know, three, four, three, just to see what classic Halo, you know, pulls from the competitive scene. I think they even said in that article that it is a test. So there you go. I'm curious. See what happens. Me too. Um, in regards to being able to watch it and whatnot, uh, Goalie Sniper asked, will the VODs be uploaded immediately after the stream ends? In which case, yes, they will be. So as soon as, like for those who are not able to watch the day that it's live, as soon as that stream ends, the VOD is immediately created on Twitch and YouTube. So you can immediately go back and start from where you want and it's right there ready to go. So, in case you have prior commitments and you're not able to watch live, there's your opportunity to watch it as it's uploaded fucking immediately, which is cool. And then also, um, one final thing to say, we we talked about it last week, quickly hit on it again here. Will is going to be at my place, right, the entire weekend watching the whole thing? Yep. Okay. So, we are going to do the Discord listen slash watch along, I guess you could say. We'll get it set up. We'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are in the Discord, you guys can join the voice channel that we'll be in. We can talk about the tournament. We'll watch the matches together. We'll talk about it. 
Will is tapping his chin. I'm thinking. I'm thinking of set up and getting everything sorted, but we'll we'll figure we'll that get out it figured later. Out. We we both have Friday off. Yep. And the tournament doesn't start until three on Friday. We have plenty of time. We'll be good to go. Three our time. Correction there. Um. So yeah, if you're any at all interested in doing this, the first time we've ever done it, uh, you can join us in Discord if you're not already joined in. Will's going to talk about it in the plug section of the sh- section of the show. Join it up and uh, join the voice channel. It's going to be a good time. We can't wait to see you there. And yeah, that's all I got for our pre-show. Should we continue on? So, yeah. Yeah. I think we've rambled on long enough. (laughs) Nonsense. We should ramble on for two hours more, Will. Oh, boy. I'm just kidding. Okay. Time for some shout outs. First and foremost, thank you to Moses FPS for providing the information in regards to the HCS Atlanta stream times and the UGC qualifier breakdown. Thank you to Maddie Rums for continually providing the 2K tournament results along with other breaking news stories on Reddit and Discord. You're greatly appreciated, my man. Thank you to everyone who participated within the first ever HCS Pro Talk Community Coloring Contest. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. And by everyone, I mean the four that actually participated. Will's going to talk about that soon. And then finally, um, thank you to everyone who participated within the community discussion for the topic this week. You guys are greatly appreciated as well. Will, what do we got for some community creations? Uh, go check out me Monday on Reddit. And uh, Don't make it sound so fucking terrible. The place is great. It, oh, no, okay. Yeah, there is good stuff over there. It's just we talk about it every week. It's always there. It's so. like one of the best things of the week. All right. And then... So we had four submissions for the HDS Pro Talk Halloween coloring contest. Who they, were they, Will? They were Mr. JK Fire. Whoop, whoop. Myself. Whoop, whoop. Josh's wife. Whoop, whoop. And my fiance. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, we followed the rules. We printed off a coloring sheet. We literally colored it by hand. And then we scanned them in. We put them in the Discord. They're there. Check them out. We did a good job. Do we revamp? I mean, do we have... Uh, no, we don't reward ourselves. No, I'm not saying we reward okay. ourselves. Okay. I'm saying, like, why wasn't this... A, why didn't this go off with more of a bad? Yeah, why the fuck did you guys call her these sheets? <laughs> I get it I'm that it's kidding. actually, you know, work. It took me, like, a whole 20 minutes. <laughs> I know this is actually work. I had to spend a whole 20 minutes on it. That's not what I'm saying. It's I get... basically what it sounded like. It was not, fucking hilarious. Maybe not everyone has access to a printer. It's true. It's, it's, it's not as common these days. It's true. It's true. Um, I'm just saying. I just uh, I had... Maybe we'll have a Christmas coloring oh, contest. God. And maybe we'll have more people submit. We need, I think uh, we should set it up beforehand because i think that's maybe one of our issues it was a yeah. halloween coloring contest that we announced on halloween or so yeah. right before yeah so maybe we need to be a little earlier what can we do to get you guys more involved it's beginning to look a lot like christmas josh loves christmas by the way and he probably will not stop singing christmas songs everywhere now until the end of time. we go but is anyway, that the line i don't even know if that's the line sure yeah all right um but yeah that's all we got for community creations this week yay no i think i think a christmas one be dope for those who haven't colored in quite some time it's quite calming it's fun coloring's fun you guys should fucking join the next one (laughs) if there is a next one we'll have to wait there will be a next one will. Oh gosh. Because I like Christmas. And I want to color some Halo Christmas things. Okay. <laughs> Sounded so hostile. To All right, you. Then I'm just gonna sit over here and let you uh do that. <laughs> I'll be the only person that does it. I color all the pictures, Will! Um Alright, we're getting fucking way off topic. 
No, I think it'll be fun, though, to do other things like this. But like you said, announce them ahead of time. Yeah. Like, much ahead of time. Um, Will. Oh. We're, uh, it's about that time. The time where I'm going to pack up my stuff and contact the wife and figure out what we're going to do for dinner. Then you're probably going to do the same thing. Unless you've already eaten dinner. I don't know your life. I don't know what you do in your free time. I'm not to judge you. That's not my job. Instead, my job is to Look at Will from across the table and talk into this microphone while Will scratches his beard. And I ask him one very simple question as we end the show always with, uh, Will, would you do me a favor and, uh, plug the show? You can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HCS Pro Talk. You can find us on Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, and Spotify. Leave us a review and let others know about the show. You can join our Discord. For Josh is laughing at me over here. Nope, you're fine. You can join our Discord for the community discussion. Join us for HCS Atlanta. It's going to be uh, amazing to watch and uh, talk with others about the competition going on. You can join our Xbox Club. In our Spartan company, just search for HDS Pro Talk. Our Xbox Club is the way you'll get invites into the community play dates. You can find us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Just search for HDS Pro Talk. You'll find our logo on all of those. And as always, thank you for listening. Josh. Yeah. On the next episode, we have reached the Atlanta Post Show. It's going to be a great time. You uh, looked at your phone and snapped your fingers. I did because we just got what was going to be a last minute submission for the coloring contest. Who was it? Dust Storm. Dust Storm, thank you. Of Podtacular fame. He didn't submit one though, Will. Oh. I said it was going to be a late one. But he said only just got back from leave, but thanks anyways. Oh, we'll get you next time, Dusty. But uh, that's okay. Yeah, womp womp. It is what it is. We only can move on and forward from here. That's right. Just like Halo esports. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. HS Pro Talk. Want to thank you very much for listening to the show. <laughs> We're going to catch you next week where we talk about the HS Atlanta Pro Show and the Toby Toe Showdown results. Will? <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> you don't have anything to add to that? Oh, nope. Just, just go ahead and close out the show, Josh. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. We love you. And uh, we hope to see you in the Discord, where we're going to be going over all this stuff with the tournament. It's going to be a great time. We hope to see you there. But until next week, ladies and gentlemen, bye bye